Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you my top 10 most essential free apps in 2018 for Windows computers. So for the most part, these apps are what I consider to be universally useful for many, if not most, uh, people who are going to be using their computer this year. So getting started first is an app called AirDroid. So as you might guess from the name of it, AirDroid allows you to connect your Windows machine to your phone. Uh, they also have a web version of AirDroid, so if you're off Windows, you can use other devices, such as a Linux machine, to connect to your phone. But on Windows, they specifically have a desktop application that you see on screen right now, where uh, you basically just connect your device, such as my Redmi Note 4 phone, into AirDroid, your account. And then, as long as you have those devices both turned on, uh, you're going to be able to send files between the two devices really easily. But also to do other things, such as use your phone's camera on your Windows desktop to be able to record your phone's screen on your Windows machine. Uh, so whatever you have going on there, you can record that to your file on your computer. And since you're able to view the phone's screen, there's also a mode over here called Air Mirror, where you can basically use your phone on your computer. If you've ever used something called Remote Desktop Connection or other apps like Team Viewer on your machine, um, possibly at work if you ever had to contact the help desk. Uh, Air Mirror is kind of the same thing where the computer can take full control over the phone. Uh, of course, this only works if you've basically authenticated your phone uh, to work on this AirDroid account. So it's not like any random person can just go ahead and do it. They have to have access granted. On this tab, you can also see the phone's notifications. You can see all of the SMS text messages that are occurring on your phones. And you can also see call history. Now, I do think most people are just going to probably use AirDroid for pulling files off of your phone and putting them on your computer. But it's much easier to do that than to send files over Bluetooth, which is usually pretty slow, or other methods like sending files through Gmail, where you're capped out at 25 megabytes. Now, you could use uh, your Google Drive, but this way it directly connects your computer to your phone, so you can get it quicker. You don't have to upload to the drive and then download on your computer. It takes a step out of that. And your phone doesn't necessarily have to be on the same network. You can have them connect over the internet. So if your phone is at home but you're at work, you could use AirDroid um, in order to basically pull up your phone and do whatever you need to with it. Next up is a tool called GreenShot. It's a screenshot taking application. Now, in Windows by default, you can take screenshots just by hitting the print screen button, uh, but you always have to do something like paste it into Microsoft Paint in order for it to actually show up and be used. Because when you hit print screen by default, it only saves the screenshot to the memory buffer on your computer. So it's stored in the memory, but it's not actually saved to a file. But when you use screenshot, um, it basically overrides the default print screen function. You can see here um, in the notification area, it shows you all the hotkeys for screenshot, and print screen is the default one. So capture region, what that's going to mean is you select a portion of your screen. So like this, I, I drag with the mouse top left to top bottom, and that space I just selected is going to give me the option to either copy it directly into Microsoft Paint, or I can have it be an email attachment in Thunderbird, or I can save it as a file directly to the computer. So if I save this to the desktop here, without even needing to access another third-party tool, I have a screenshot perfectly taken for the selected region of the screen, not necessarily the full region of the screen. But you might have also saw in the menu, you can take a full screen screenshot by hitting Control Print Screen. Same thing, it'll give you the drop-down menu, you save it to the desktop, and now we have the full desktop taken as a screenshot. So being able to enhance your default screenshot functionality in Windows is really cool. Screenshot takes it to another level and makes it a lot more streamlined and simple. Okay, next up, coming in at number eight. I think more and more people want to record their own videos, whether that's using an actual digital camera and hooking that up to your computer or using a webcam or even using your phone as a webcam, which I've shown how to do on some of my recent videos. But OBS is a free tool for basically capturing and also streaming video content. So you can record to a file or you can stream to sites like Twitch or YouTube. It's really easy to use. I do have a lot of tutorials on my channel for it. 
and you won't find a better option for free. Uh, also worth mentioning, you can use it on Linux quite easily, but um, for Windows as well, it's just a really solid tool. It's free, it's constantly being updated, and a lot of people do use it. Hordes of tutorials out there for OBS on YouTube. So if doing video is anything you're interested in, I definitely recommend you check out OBS. As you can see actually right now, that's what I'm using to record this video. So really that should be all the recommendation you need, honestly. Okay, next up, coming in at number seven for this list, Battle.net. Now, normally I wouldn't go ahead and recommend a game platform for a list like this because mostly we're talking about tools, right? But I think it's worth mentioning that Blizzard Games and Battle.net uh, have been making a lot of their content free to play. A lot of games really in general, especially on phones, have been going more the direction of free to play with uh, microtransactions if you want to get all the content. But on Battle.net right now, they've taken a lot of their games and made it so that it's really accessible to people who aren't really looking to spend money. So right now, StarCraft II, a game that was previously uh, basically pay to play, where you have to buy the game and possibly the expansions, a lot of their content has now been made free to play. You can see their headline right there. They also have Hearthstone, an incredibly fun card game which is free to play. Uh, they make the money by basically selling booster packs, but you can get a lot of packs without actually spending money. So it's a really fun game and you can do just fine free to play. Heroes of the Storm, um, most comparable to League of Legends. If you play games at all, I'm sure you've heard of that. Heroes of the Storm, also free to play. And even other games here like Overwatch sometimes have free to play weekends. That's more of a shooter type game. So if you are looking for free to play games at all, I would say definitely check out Battle.net if you haven't. All Blizzard games are really, really solid. And a lot of them are more in the direction of free to play. Number six, LibreOffice. So right now you're looking at LibreOffice Writer and if you've never seen it before, you're probably thinking, oh, that looks a lot like Microsoft Word. Because yeah, basically it is. LibreOffice as a free office suite is a free alternative to Microsoft Office and other Office software suites out there, which allow you to do things like make presentations, um, where you would have a slideshow, uh, kind of the equivalent of Microsoft PowerPoint, to type up documents such as a book report in LibreOffice Writer, the answer to Microsoft Word. But if we go into the file menu, you can also see they also have things like spreadsheets. So what do you think uh, of when you think spreadsheet? You would probably think Microsoft Excel. Um, LibreOffice Calc, very similar. They don't exactly mirror each other identically, but I find that LibreOffice is not only really good, but it's also free. They do run on donations, but if you don't want to go buy the new Microsoft Office package this year, um, then you probably want to go ahead and check out LibreOffice because it's free and it's also really good. Um, if you do have documents that are basically saved in the Microsoft formats. Don't worry, you can open them up and edit them inside of the LibreOffice suite. So if you have a Microsoft.doc file or .docx, don't worry, you can use that in LibreOffice Writer and you'll be just fine. So app number five, Panda Antivirus. So there's a lot of different antivirus software out there that come with both free versions and then they typically ask you to go ahead and switch over to the premium suite, right? Um, I found that Panda, as the free version, is very unintrusive. It doesn't really give you the same kind of ads that other ones would be hard pushing you on. Uh, if you actually use Panda Antivirus, it kind of just silently sits in the background and protects your machine. If you go check out some of the articles online, um, the data is showing that Panda is actually pretty solid in its performance as well. So that's why I chose to go ahead and upgrade to the Internet Security Suite package um, on my machine. But if you're just looking for a free antivirus, I think Panda is a really solid one to go with. Simply because it does the job, it sits in the background, and it's not going to annoy you. So number four, Wonderlist. It's been a while since I talked about this on my channel, and there are some pretty decent uh, alternatives to Wonderlist, such as Todoist. Um, where you can not only have web interfaces for them and Android iOS apps for using these, they basically all um, store the lists and the content you write on it in their centralized server and then you connect to it by logging in with your account. But they have uh, a desktop app 
in the Windows 10 store for Wonderlist and also some of those other apps. But over time, I found that Wonderlist is the one I just happen to prefer. It allows you to create a lot of different lists, obviously. You can set deadlines for those um, basically tasks you have to do. Uh, creating a shopping list is really easy. You can even send a list to, let's say, family members so that they can see the list on their phone and you can see the list on your phone. But having the Windows 10 application means you don't need to actually open up a web browser to use it. Being able to just go to the start menu, type in Wonderlist, and open this up in order to basically manage your day, manage your tasks, figure out what you're going to be doing. So if you don't already have a preferred list application, then I would definitely say give Wonderlist a shot. And you can also sync it up with your phone, so you might want to install it there too if you do happen to have an Android or iOS phone. At number three in my list is GEMP, and also in parentheses, Krita, because they're similar apps, but they don't exactly serve the same purpose. So GIMP is a photo manipulation application. You can take uh, images you download online, or you can just start a completely new image. Use tools like pencil, brush, and paint bucket, as well as gradients, um, to basically edit your images and export them. So if you've ever used Microsoft Paint, <laughs> I mean, that's a terrible example because it's so outdated. Um, but basically, it's like a very advanced version of Microsoft Paint. You have a lot of tools you can do uh, pretty professional stuff with GIMP if you actually know what you're doing. The closest comparison for GIMP in terms of paid apps would probably be Adobe Photoshop, but if you've ever looked at Photoshop products, they are pretty expensive. Um, so for the average person, it might not justify the cost. But if you're looking to do things like edit some of your family photos uh, or create thumbnails on YouTube, which is something I'm doing on a daily basis, of course, uh, or even just to touch up certain aspects of any image. Maybe you even want to just make a meme and post that online. GIMP is a really cool tool for doing that. It's probably the best free photo manipulation software out there. Now, I did mention Krita earlier. That's K-R-I-T-A. If you're more into doing digital painting, Krita is the free application for doing that. So if you are a artist who is on a complete budget, and maybe you want to take a drawing tablet, and get started using um, all kinds of fancy brush strokes and that sort of thing, you would probably go with Krita instead of GIMP. They're in similar buckets, but I think more people are going to really need to use GIMP because it's more general purpose and less at creating art, but more just editing photos. So anyway, if you're looking for a free application to do that, GIMP is still leagues above basic tools like Microsoft Paint. So. I definitely recommend everybody gets it on their machine, because sooner or later you're probably going to need some of the tools in here. So number two, Facebook Messenger for Desktop. It's a very simple application. It basically connects you to your Facebook account, and you're able to send messages to your friends and family on Facebook without actually opening the web browser. And I find using this application is a lot more lightweight. Uh, the Facebook actual website can actually be kind of heavy duty. A lot of self loads when you go load Facebook. So now you can just have the Messenger contained as a tiny app on your desktop. Uh, you can basically receive and send messages without having your web browser open. So if you don't want to load the full Facebook and you're on a Windows machine, Messenger for Desktop is a really cool tool. If you've ever used the Android or iOS Messenger applications as opposed to the Facebook application, the Facebook being the full one where you get all the newsfeed stuff, um, then you probably know what to expect. Messenger for Desktop is a kind of the Windows version of that. Now, it is worth mentioning this is an unofficial app. The developer has no association with Facebook, but it's a really cool app. And I do really like what he's done. I find it much more convenient than opening up a web browser every time you want to talk to someone on the computer. Okay, and at number one, speaking of web browsers, uh, I've tried a lot of different web browsers out there from Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Opera, Rivality, which is basically Opera, Waterfox, Chromium, and I'm sure a few others that I'm forgetting at the moment. So Brave Browser is based on Chrome, and most Chrome-based browsers do tend to run pretty fast. But it's very privacy-focused in the sense that Brave Browser has an active shield where all of these little tracker scripts that run when you go to most major sites and advertisements are going to be blocked 
So less companies are going to be able to pull up information on you as you browse the web. So basically those little tracker tools, which are going to say where you've been, what you like to click on, it tries to block those sorts of things. And um, also ads as well. A lot of them are video based or photo based and videos and photos take more time to load on your page. So as it's blocking advertisements, you actually do save some loading time. So here you can see over the last, uh, I don't even know how long. It's probably saved me 12 minutes of page loading time. And that's actually probably more than it sounds like because loading a page typically takes about one or two seconds. But what if it could take half a second instead of one or two? That's actually kind of a sizable difference. It does also include integration in several mainstream add-ons, such as LastPass. So if you have a password manager uh, that's third party, there's a good chance you can actually get that in the settings over here. I'll actually just show the extensions they have right now. So it's not a huge amount, but I found it to be sufficient. It's worth mentioning here that if you do want to still support content creators as you load up basically YouTube videos or website articles, can use this system called Brave Payments, which is currently in beta, where when you load up sites, um, you basically have an online wallet, which will try to contribute a little bit of money towards that person, even though you blocked the ads on the site. So if you feel guilty over blocking a YouTube ad, that's one way you can get around that, but still not have to deal with all the trackers or the ads that are really, really annoying. So beyond blocking trackers, I do find in general, it's a very fast web browser. It's lightweight. It doesn't clutter you up with lots of random stuff. And if you need it, you still can have a bookmarks toolbar. So don't worry about that. I know that having the toolbar is pretty important. Also uh, for these shields, so I can kind of pop this up and you can see, oh, this I had to add in trackers. There's a few options you can check or disable if you want to have more control over it some drop downs. Um, but more importantly, on a site by site basis, you can enable or disable the shield. So if you're trying to get some functionality to work, but the shields are actually preventing that from working, you can just disable the shield from that site. Or you can mess around with some of the advanced controls if you want to try to pinpoint the problem while still blocking everything else. Now, before we wrap this video up, I did want to mention that having a VPN is pretty important. If you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. Previously, this one called CyberGhost was free to use. And if there was still a totally free option, I would have had this on the list. And originally, I planned to. Um, they sort of have a seven-day free trial where you basically can get the premium version at seven days trial for no charge. You don't have to put a credit card or anything in. But worth mentioning, uh, for the next nine days, basically from when this video is released, they're having a 77% off sale on the VPN service. So if you are in the market for a VPN, uh, I definitely recommend CyberGhost. I've tried a few of them out there, but CyberGhost has been consistently really solid. If you care about having good speeds on your VPN, the servers on CyberGhost are pretty responsive. So I would say give it a shot. You can at least try the seven days uh, free trial, honestly, since there's actually nothing to lose there. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description, as well as this top 10 list that we went over in this video for the free essential apps I'm recommending you use in Windows for 2018. So thanks for watching. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future video content.